Okay, we're live. Hey, we're waiting for Monica to join. We're waiting for Monica to join. So, wait. So my fans are the best because they know that I'm like terrible at Instagram Live and I never know what's happening. Um, I literally just requested, okay, I have to request, let's see. I don't see any, I don't see her. Hey everybody. Wait, but there's so many requests to join. So you guys, so I wanted to go live tonight because my friend Monica Raymond has a show named Hightown and I love this show so much. It was filmed in my hometown. I mean, not literally my hometown. It's, it's filmed in P-Town and I grew up in Boston and I spent a lot of time in P-Town as a, a young adult uh, turning up and acting crazy. And um, when I, saw, I first saw this pilot, I was like really excited to watch it. And then I saw that it was Monica's show. So I reached out to Monica and I was like, I love your show and I'm so excited and we've been talking and I wanted to go live tonight. Um, for the finale. So let's see, is Monica with us? I don't see her. Do we see her, shall we? So she's requesting. Oh my God, look at all these requests. Won't she, she'll come up as a. Yeah. Thank you for your patience, everybody. So is she requesting? Yeah, so okay. Let's view again, view, Monica Raymond, here she is. Waiting for Monica Raymond, connecting. Woo! Hi! Hi! <laughs> this is so cool. Oh my God. So I just got to the Bahamas. I literally just landed like 30 seconds ago. Wow. Well, welcome to the Bahamas. Thank you, Mama Shiny. You're in Utah, right? I'm in Utah. I am in Park City. Hi, everyone. How's it going there? Are you having fun? Your pictures look amazing. So fun. We, I'm having such a blast. I went on a little solo hike today and did a little self-care day out in the, in the wilderness. Nice. So good. How are you? I'm so good. Now, are you there with your girlfriend? Is it girlfriend or wife? I don't want to uh, get in trouble. It's it's my girlfriend for now. Okay, okay, for now. <laughs> Look, she's but, blushing you know, now. So she's blushing. We'll oh, she's waiting for a ring. <laughs> um, she's upstairs, and I'm like just sitting here with my beverage, and so excited to talk to you. I'm so, oh, and congratulations by the way on um, season seventeen, right? Oh my God, yes. Let, let's not say those numbers. It's almost like it's almost like my birthday at this point. It's like no, it's not the numbers. <laughs> Um, so I just, so my assistant is here with me and I just found out that I cannot, so listen, stars, if you're listening, we cannot get high town in the Bahamas and this is a problem. So no. I can't watch the finale. So I'm freaking out because I need to see this finale and can I get it on Slingbox? Cause I have Slingbox. I need to see what happens. <laughs> Wait, please tell me the actor's name who plays Osito because he is ridiculous so good his name is Atkins and if you guys if you guys want to go follow him on Instagram he's incredible and what's lovely about him is he's actually such a sweetheart and he's so funny but like he also plays this hella scary dude on, on <laughs> high town and like but you also kind of like him so it's this no he's so this is what it is it's like yeah. people it's like it's like Denzel right it's like he has this like Denzel has this quality where he can be such a badass and in, 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 in a monster, but you still love him. And I don't yeah. know what you call that. It's Tony Soprano had the same thing. James Gandolfini had the same thing. Um, and, and, and the actor who plays Osito has that, like you feel for him. And 
And so I will, I'll say to the audience, and Monica will, I think, agree with me, that to be able to have the quality of being a killer and a madman and still make you feel for them and make you have empathy and, and empathize with why they are living the life they're living is a real, not only skill, but it's just a quality that, that you don't come by often in actors. So Absolutely. I want to follow him on Instagram. Will you tweet me? Will you text me his, um, his Instagram? I will. I'll send it. I'll send it to you. Um, okay. that, he's amazing. And then like, I, I got to say the entire cast of Hightown is so good. I just, They're so I good. Everybody that. is so good. So and I'm good. so sorry. I just got off a flight and like, so I'm like, not good with everybody's character names and everybody's real names, but I mean, big up to all the cast because the cast is phenomenal. And who's the actress who plays? Um, Renee. Yes. The Renee. Her, so yes. her name is Riley, Riley Vocal, and she. I was texting her all the last six weeks because I was like, every time you are on screen, she just blows me away. And she's playing this character, you know, she's a stripper by day. She's, you know, sleeping with the, like the drug pin guy. And then she also has this such a vulnerability to her where she's falling for Badge's character, Ray Abruzzo. And this like this character, when you get a character like that, where they get to play six, seven, eight different shades of, of who they are, it's just, again, like what we were talking about with Atkins, it's such a testament to her skill. I mean, truly, I, I'm not even it saying really that to like BS. Like I really am shocked and so, so, impressed by her like being able to just be like that bombastic as the stripper and then yeah. like being this soft amazing mom at night it's so cool Whew, i gotta yeah. say <laughs> tell me her name again sorry tell me her name riley again. right her name is riley she is incredible and i have to tell everybody who's watching like if you think that's easy i'm sorry to get up there and play a stripper take your clothes off kill it be sexy it's that's not easy there's a crew watching there's lines, there's blocking. It's not easy to do that. And she literally crushes every scene and she pulls focus in every yeah. scene. And who's Ray Abruzzo, hottie? Super okay. hottie. Oh, you like him, yeah. Yes, okay. I love him. And I don't go for white boys much, but he's a cutie. <laughs> yes. Oh, right. James Badge Dale is his name. And okay. he is such a badass. You know, he and I met at the boxing gym. That's how we met each other. We had both been cast on this show. And I was at my gym in New York and he was there and our trainer was like, oh, she's on Stars. Aren't you on a Stars show? And we were both like, oh shit, we're on the same show. <laughs> and so we've been best buddies ever since. Um, he's amazing. James Badge Dale. Wait, is, Wait. is James not from Boston? Because his accent is on point. Yeah, he, it, it, uh, I don't think he's, I don't know. I don't think he's originally from there because I know he was practicing the dialect the whole time. He's so, really good. His accent, yeah. I'm super, and so I grew up in Boston and I spent, you know, my young adult years going to P-Town with all my friends. Cool. And, um, and his accent is amazing. Yeah, I'm going to let him know you said that. I'm going to, I literally, because he was so freaking out about it. It was driving him crazy. I'm sure. Yeah. It's and listen, it's a really hard one and when they get it wrong, they get it really wrong and it's so distracting. And I have to say that, you know, my husband is also from Boston and my husband saw the pilot first. I hadn't seen any um, you know, trailers for the show and my husband was like, I watched this new show last night called High Town. It it takes place in P Town. The pilot was amazing. I really want you to watch it with me. So I was like, okay. Wow. So then I watched it. I was like, wait a minute. That's not for Monica. That's Monica. And <laughs> I was like, I'm watching the show. Like, this is amazing. And, um, and everybody's accent, everybody does such a good job. Um, yeah. It's really obviously been on a, you know, show myself for 16 seasons. I'm pretty cynical about television. I'm a pretty <laughs> cynical TV watcher. And you guys are just, it's such a good show. The writing, oh, the acting, great. um, it's very rare that I look forward to a show and I'm pissed that I can't see the fucking finale tonight. Are you kidding me right now? Like, can you, you can't watch the finale? You can't go online because you're going to get so many spoilers. You're going to have to oh figure out God. how to see it. Well, my husband has Slingbox, so I think I might be able to watch it 
okay. on Slingbox. Well, so I haven't seen the finale either. Um, and I thought that maybe I would go live while I watch it here tonight if people want to hop okay. over me when we're done because I haven't seen it. Oh, you haven't seen it. But you obviously filmed it, so you know what's happening. I do know what's happening. Yeah. I'm so pissed. It you has know been a year, so. Oh, my God. Oh. It's really true to life, I got to tell you. I mean, listen, I haven't lived in Boston in 20 years. Um, but it's a really, it's a really good piece of work. You all should be super proud of it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ellen. I appreciate it. So season two, what's happening? Wait, wait. What's I don't know. I don't know. I think what's going to, well, so, ooh, I can't see. I can't tell you because you haven't. No, no, I can't. Yeah. But like with COVID and everything, when are you guys supposed to go back? I mean, see, so, so also let me say that, like, listen, I'm super grateful. I've had an incredible run on Grays. Um, I'm, I have the most incredible fans and I know Monica, I know you can sort of relate how hard our long drama is. And you made an incredible jump from Chicago fire to, so let me all just say one second, let me just take a moment. So she was on, Monica was on a very successful show and she took a leap, which isn't easy to do. It's not celebrated. It's not supported. It's not anybody, it's not something anybody tells you to do. They tell you, no, stay where you are. You got to hit. You're on something that's going. You're on something that's working. Stay. She had the balls. She took a leap. And this is what happens when you take chances. And I'm so happy to see you thriving and shining and so successful and it really makes my heart sing to see you like make that leap and and see you in this role because you're so you're just living your best life in this role you can see it in every single scene you're, you're in, like you're you know? me, i am getting so emotional because what ellen's talking about is so true and like taking a job and then fire's still on the air it's like yeah. 10 or 9 or something they got another three-year pickup so taking that jump is, it's scary. scary, man. It's so scary. And like, but it, it did take some balls and I was really scared, but it was such a, a moment where I just had to believe in myself, you know, like that's when you really show up for yourself, right? If you're like, well, nobody's really supporting this, but I know that I have to do this and I don't know why. So I'm just going to like jump off the mountain and see if I can fly. Right. <sighs> And you are flying. Okay. <laughs> and it's something, by the way, I've never done, you know? Um, it's different. You weren't the lead of that show. Right. So it's a little easier. I'm sort of, you know, in a, I have more responsibility on me. Yep. Um, but I don't want anyone to underestimate what a task that is. And you deserve all the credit in the world. Thank you. And I'm really so proud of you. And I'm so excited. I get to live vicariously. I can stay on my show <laughs> and I get to live vicariously through you. Um, well, I hope someday I get to, I don't know, maybe I get to work with you, whether it's over let's at do it. or, let's do it. or Listen, somewhere else. I got I to gotta wind it up sometime. It's, you know, <laughs> we're getting to that time, folks. I'm not saying right now, but like we're getting close. It's, you know, I've given it everything I have and a little more. You um, give it up. It's so amazing. talk to me about what are, the, what are they saying to you guys about COVID and about season two, if, if you can share anything. Sorry. Yeah, about I, don't the really, I don't really know much, actually. I mean, we have a season two, so that's cool. Yeah. But, you know, the COVID situation, I can't, it's got to be something similar to what they're telling you. You know, I, I think everybody's hope is that things start to get shooting again in the fall. But, you know, as you all know, who are watching this, I mean, the news changes every 10 minutes. Um, you know, I think if, if we could be shooting yesterday, they would. Because right. Star loves the show so much. But I think we're going to see late fall. I mean, that's my guess. But it could be even later. I don't know. Which will present challenges. And it'll sort of have to work into the story. Because I'm sure, as you all know, so Provincetown is the, the, the southernmost tip of Massachusetts and um, there's a lot, it's cold, you know, it's gonna get cold there uh, cold. in October, it's gonna get cold, which will add like, so you guys shot season one in the summer, I'm guessing? That's right, we shot it in yeah. season one in the summer and then in, some, in season two, I think 
the winter element is going to be part of the story. It would have to be, which is also really interesting because, you know, I've never spent any time in the, um, in the winter in P-Town, but I definitely on the vineyard, on Master's Vineyard, I definitely have been there like in September and on the Cape. Um, mm -hmm. You know, even in September, like it literally after Labor Day, it just closes up. There's just no one there. It's, everyone's gone. So it, it has this like eerie, you know, this different eerie vibe. Yeah. Which is I really think cool for storytelling. So cool for storytelling. And like kind of also the way it, it looks. I've never been there either, but what I've seen in photographs, I think it'll photograph beautifully. But because the story is so centered on like the locals there and what happens when all the tourists are gone it's going to be the perfect backdrop for like more crazy shit to happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm excited and it will be cold, but I've been in Chicago for a long time. Right. You I can deal. Cold. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I love these comments. People are like, I'm literally screaming. You guys are the best for following oh. us, for loving us. We love you right back. Love you so much. This is so cool. Um, this is so cool that this is we my get first to sort live. of it's for Monica's first live, <laughs> and we get to share fans. And you are supporting us, supporting each other, and that means a lot to us because that's what women should be doing. Brazil, what's up, Brazil? Hola, Chile, Ooh, Peru, Peru. Oh, hola. Como están? Colombia, yeah, this is what I'm talking. That about. accent is amazing. <laughs> Well, wait, no, so, wait, so I got to tell you something. So, so let me, so let me ask you a, let me ask you a question. Yeah. About the, about the, uh, the lesbian culture. Can we talk about lesbian culture for a moment? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. Bring because, it on. Okay. So, cause, cause now I'm a mom of three, right? And I, I haven't been in the clubs in a minute. Mama hasn't been in the clubs in a minute. Mm -hmm. So I noticed, I said to Chris when we were watching, a couple of weeks ago, because the show wasn't on last week. So the lesbian, the girl that works at the bar, at the mm -hmm. tea dance. Mm -hmm. Now, when I was hanging out at the tea dances in P-Town, and I've hung out at the tea dances in P-Town, uh -huh. never would the girls be mixing with the guys. Now, see, all you youngsters, this is, this is here, and Monica's much younger than me. But this is where our generational shit comes in, right? Right. And all of, all of you kids who are so woke and we love you and you're transforming the culture and transforming the conversations that we're so grateful for. But when I was at the tea dances, it was lesbian clubs and gay clubs. And you didn't see a lot of mixing. Mm -hmm. And in that scene, when I see a girl bartending at the tea dance, I'm like, oh, th this is, you're probably too young to know that this is a whole different vibe than 20 years ago. I'm like literally like dating myself, but that's okay. Yeah, no, <laughs> I mean, I think you're right. It is a different vibe. I haven't been to a club in a minute either. Um, Cause we work. Cause mama, we work. We, we got it. We got to bring it home. We got, we got to make that money. And, <laughs> I I do know that I think one of the oldest lesbian bars like in the country is based in Provincetown and it's still there. I don't know what it's called. Maybe our fans will know it, but it is like a staple of P-Town, like one or these one or two lesbian bars there. And you're right. It was like so separated for so long. Right. But now because... Um, inclusion because of the conversation of gender um, and sort of seeing this intersectionality between um, non-binary and however however people want to identify and sort of the conversation of what gender is now um, between like uh, queer folks and heteronormative and so the, the the conversation is so much more complex in a way that liberates us because now we're beginning to see where we can present how we feel inside and that's such a new new frontier that that these that the, this generation is really like bringing to the forefront which i'm so grateful for um so maybe that has something to do with it you know it's like sort of becoming one um 
I don't know. It's it's so beautiful too. I, I, yeah, I, love I, I really, I, I really loved it. Um, when, when I see those scenes, I'm just like, I love these kids. I love this new generation. I love the acceptance and the, and the oneness of the community because when I grew up and I did grow up in the gay community and there was a lot of sort of, you know, there's the gays and there's the lesbians and we don't fuck with each other. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was always really confusing to me as a straight person. Um, but I just, I love just watching it all. I love watching these new generations of kids um, embrace each other. And, you know, so I got one, one year in Pizza, my last year that I was in Pizza, I think I went to Pizza on like three summers. Um, and I would only go for a couple days at a time. And I was in Madonna drag. <laughs> I was I was in I was in Madonna I was in Madonna Vogue track. Yes. And I got carried down the street by by a group of girls. I literally got like yeah. kidnapped and like carried down the street. It was amazing. That's I was awesome. a little scared. I was a little scared to be honest. I didn't know where I was going. You were the hottest girl on the street. I was like lip syncing on a rooftop. I mean, um, and I remember, so my friend Chip, I was with my friends Chip and, and Desi, and my friend Chip was holding me up, and I, we were on a rooftop, and I had so much sort of like, I was all oiled up, and like I had so much like body makeup and oil on, and I remember him holding me up, and I was so slippery, and I was like, this is how I'm going to meet my end. I'm literally going to fall off of this roof. <laughs> he's probably he was probably high on whatever he was on uh -huh. and he was holding me up and I'm lip syncing Madonna and I'm like I know he's like my skin is too slippery right now this is not gonna be good I am gonna fall off but what is fabulous way to go you had oh uh, <laughs> I mean, like a damn prayer <laughs> just like a damn prayer I had a lot of I had a lot of fun in P Town. I really oh, did. I love that you guys are sort of telling stories in that town because it has yeah. such a rich history for the culture, and yeah. um, and the opioid crisis is a huge um, epidemic and amazing to shine a light on that also. So yeah, it's it's something that is kind of near and dear to me as well, unfortunately, um, and that was such a big reason why I was so attracted to the show as well is because here's an opportunity to tell it like it is and you know it's so normalized and and, and it shouldn't be it should be shocking and and bombastic and scary and in your face you know like this is what happens when people are in this disease of addiction so and and also from like my character's point of view her being an alcoholic and having to deal with with sobriety and what that is and so there's a, there's a lot of um, conversation about that. That's like at the front of the show, which I love because it just uh, affects al almost everyone in this country, you know, unfortunately. But I'm really passionate about that and talking about the opioid epidemic and talking about addiction and mental health um, because like the show is full of these flawed characters who are addicted to something in some way. And we get, we sort of see the, the tragedy that comes from it, you know? <sighs> yeah, I think that, listen, I hope you all are appreciating, you know, the, the blend that this show is bringing, really, of highlighting these super important issues and bringing light to them, but also entertaining us. Um, and I think as actors, I think Monica will agree with me, as actors, any chance we get to do that, to talk about problems that y'all can relate to and also entertain you, but also make you feel like you're not alone. Um, you know, I think, I think that's why we're all in this business, to be able to do all of it, to, to, you know? Yeah, um, I mean, like to piggyback off that too, for me as a storyteller, it's, now I'm at a point in my life, like I'm, I'm old enough now, I've been on the planet a, a long time now, <laughs> enough time to be able to decide like what I want to do with the time left, you know? And so being uh, conscious about the projects that we do as actors is now, it almost feels like a responsibility to ourselves, but also the people who, who follow us, you know, like if there's something that's personal to me, I'm going to do it. 
because because it's affected me and so and and now i know it, it affects so many other people and if it connects me to the viewers in a personal way like that's that's why we do this you're absolutely yeah. It's really incredible that we have this, um, I know with me, and, and I know you're gonna gain more followers and more followers because this show really is so good and it's worthy of all the attention. So I hope you all watch this show, watch our show. But it's true, it's like, you know, to be able to have meaning to our work um, is really impactful and you all following us makes us feel like we're doing something good. And I hope you all see that for women to support women is something else we all should be doing. Um, we all should be loving each other and supporting each other and just have open hearts and open minds and be able to listen to each other's stories and try to understand each other a little more. I think that's what the world needs right now, for sure. Connection and love and support. And she's not bad to look at either, Monica Raymond, just saying. <laughs> Uh, room, so I can say that, Mama. Thank She's you. off on her ATV somewhere. I'm yeah. happily married anyway, so it's all good. <laughs> okay, so my battery is going to die soon. So before we hang up, so I hope that I can stream this or I can sling box it. Can you give me just like a little, just a little bit? In case, in case I can, I'm, I'm literally like here for a while. I, I, I gotta find a way to get this show. So, but just tell me a little bit about what happens tonight. What happens to Osito? Uh, well, he, you're gonna, you're gonna see, you know how you saw him earlier in the season? Um, sort he starts to go to that guy and he starts to deal on the side a little yep, bit. Yep. Mm -hmm. He's like trying to get out of Frankie's thumb. Are We're those gonna... Trinidadians? Wait, who are they? They're, they're the, uh, the the not Trinidadians there the um well he, he's the, Haitian Osito no no but the guys that he's trying to mess with they're oh uh, Frankie yeah they're yeah, from, he's, he's Puerto Rican oh they're Puerto Ricans no there's some other I don't know there's something about. else in the show the um I forget but, the guy who's in the house with sharp with the girl. Yeah, with the daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's oh. not it's not Trinidadian. It's uh, I don't know where I don't know where he's from. I, I never... forget, but it's like uh, when you grow up in Boston, there, there's a community. That, yeah. So okay, so so he starts messing with them. Yeah. So he starts messing with them, and uh, we're gonna start see well. Oh, I don't know if I should tell you, but we're gonna see like the tension between Frankie and Osito ramp up by the end and okay. then you're gonna see my character um you know meet up with ray meet up with ray abruzzo and kind of join forces with him i love and, that and we decide you know what yo we're gonna go after osito fuck this let's get this guy we have enough so we go after him um something scary happens to me and then by the end of it like I'm all in, Ray, Ray's all in, but he's kind of like on the outskirts now, but I'm like knees deep into the, into the uh, department. And then I, at the very end, I see that I'm gonna have to be dealing with Frankie like one-on-one. -on -one. I know, that's all I could say. Oh my God, okay. <laughs> that's super scary. So I wanna have a proper send off before my battery dies. Um, I love you so much. Love you too. Thank, Thank you, Thank you for doing this for me. Um, I'm so happy. excited. I'm like a super fan. <laughs> this is crazy because I'm a super fan of you. Um, and, uh, and, and I'll text you tomorrow. Okay, cool. Okay, I hope you all watch the show. Please download the show. Watch Hightown on Stars. These people, all of them, are working their asses off to entertain you. And it's really, it's such a good show. Um, and I love them all so much. So thanks, everybody, for joining our live. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much, Ellen. Thank you, Monica. I love you. Have a good weekend. Bye. Bye-bye.